Hello, welcome to Sisu Nits Knitting Podcast episode 3, I think. Um, where you're very much welcome if you whether you are a returning or a new viewer. I'm Anna, my friends call me Empo, and this is my yeah, crafting and knitting podcast here on YouTube. Um, a little bit about myself maybe. Um, I'm 31 years old, originally from Finland. Um, I moved to Netherlands about uh, 10-ish years ago because of my spouse being Dutch. Uh, I live in the south of Lemberg, uh, near uh, near the town of uh, Valkenburg, which you might have seen in the best places, to, uh, best Christmas markets in Europe, at least in the Netherlands. Um, so uh, yeah, so I'm coming at you from my little corner at my attic. Um, you might see my table is a little bit wiggly, but I have to choose between wiggly or squeaky, and I always take wiggly over squeaky. So, um, yeah, I'm in a bit of a new setup here because um, I uh, I suffer from spinal rheumatism, so arthri spondylosis arthrit arthritis, maybe if I, if I it's a lot easier to say in Finland. It's just called back spinal rheuma. Uh, but yeah, so uh, it's a little bit hard for me to sit there uh, or anywhere. Basically, that is too hard or um, that doesn't have back support. So I've uh, moved the back support so that now I can actually look like I'm comfortable um, and be comfortable. So um, this is a little bit of a new setup. I like changing my setup here and there. I like changing the graphics here and there. So you will probably notice that I like playing around with things, but hopefully this would be a good setup uh, for my spine and my back. So we'll go with this one. Um, yeah, it is. Uh, actually, it is 21st of November, so we're almost hitting December, uh, meaning that my uh, intended schedule of hitting um, hitting the rec button, rec button, that sounded really weird, hitting the play button, no, tape button, rec button, okay. That went awkward, but you know I'm not I'm not a native English speaker, so you'll notice that. For example, my boyfriend will forever ever hold it against not not hold it against me, but he will forever remember when I saw said chainsaw. I just said shaysaw, and he will always be when I mispronounce something. He will always be like, "Yeah, are you gonna break it with the chainsaw?" Shaysaw, which is this is fine. I speak many languages, so I don't take offense if I mispronounce something every here and then because I can get back to him. In several other languages, so um, but we have this um, friendly banter going on around um, at times. So uh, yeah, but I'm filming later than uh, I anticipated because I was well, honestly, I was sick for a couple of weeks, and I've been a little bit tired from work as well. Because of course, when uh, when winter comes, everybody's sick. There's more work to do for the people who left, so it's been. Uh, quite a ride but now I'm here and yeah I have technically a lot to show you but technically a lot of it has already left they've taken a literally an airplane and left so um let's get into it because there's quite a quite a few socks so today I would like uh, today I would like to speak to you about uh, the box of socks I've made for my colleagues in the UK uh, I would like you to sp uh, blah 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 <laughs> Honestly, I'm not a very big person on cutting, so if I just do a blooper, it will just come here to the film because I'm honestly not that big in uh, in cutting my uh, editing my things. I edit every twelve minutes because my old uh, my old Canon can't take more, and I also like putting the sections like cutting between the sections so I know where where what is because uh, just editing and adding stuff on a hour long blob is is quite hard. Mm. Okay, so um, on t I have I've, I've, I have a box of so socks to show you. I have uh, some gift knitting, and I would like to also talk about gift knitting a little bit. And then instead of introducing a uh, Finnish yarn company or yarn brand or dyer to this week, sorry, Coca Cola. Um, I would like to show you something from my own culture. I am a Karelian by blood and culture from home. Uh, my dad is only half Karelian, uh, but uh, because of my grandma and grandpa and my mum, a Karelian tradition would be very much a part of my life. So 
and I'm very interested about them because I, I really, really appreciate my cultural heritage, uh, especially more now when I live abroad. But let's talk about that in, in the later section. So, um, yeah, let's hop on the horse and ride towards my box of socks. Okay, so... Um, okay, so I'm just going to get a little bit closer. In the Netherlands, it seems that, that every... No... <laughs> in our house, uh, no floor is straight. It's also why this table is wiggly. Even though I have piled a lot of stuff underneath it, it still wiggles, but now it doesn't squeak. So I'll take wiggle over squeaky any day. But because my spine isn't straight, I have to lean a little bit forward. So uh, it helps to lean on a desk or and something and stuff. Although I think now you can see all the mess I have in the background, but doesn't matter. That's just who I am as a person. A little bit of a disaster or a, tur a walking tornado, as my dad says. Um, yes. Um, box of socks. So last year I gave some socks to my Finnish colleagues and they really loved them. Um, and I decided that this year I will knit a pair for every rep I have or field rep I have in the UK because I work for the Finnish and Finnish and UK market in my job. Um, so of course there was a few people. Um, so first things first was like what kind of thickness of yarn. Um, I ended up with the iron weight. Uh, last my last episode I spoke about Seitsema Veljesta um, and I ended up with that weight of yarn because I find it uh, I assume because I think well, UK is more up north than um, Netherlands, and already here I noticed that during 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 the winter and autumn months, fingering weight socks aren't just gonna cut it. So uh, often I wear fingering weight socks and then a sock on top. So I I'm, I go I might go double trouble, but just a fingering weight sock isn't enough. So uh, I decided to go with iron weight plus, of course, and then I can thin it up pretty quick. Um, and because the yarn was easily available in 150 gram skeins. So, okay, so I have 10 reps, so I need to whip up 10 socks. Um, I decided to go for putting two small sizes, two big sizes, and the rest are, except these ones, are medium sizes. So basically three big sizes, large size socks, uh, two small size socks, and some medium. Why do I say me medium, small, um, and such? Because I knit my uh, socks in such gauge that they stretch a lot. So basically, um, this one has been blocked. So if you put this into the washing machine and ride it up in 40, it'll squeeze out. So it will it will tighten tighten up. If you put this to a bath with some conditioner or wool wash on it, well. I don't know with wool wash, but with conditioner on it, it'll it'll relax even more, and then you can a little bit adjust it as it's wet. And um, so they stretch. You can go up and down a, a size, size or two. So because yeah, I have a quite a loose gauge. It's not too loose, but I like that my socks are very squishy and soft, especially the big ones. Uh, the the finger away ones I like to be quite snug. But um, the big ones, because I usually wear them on top of another sock, and if they're too tight, I notice that um, I get a little bit of like a, uh, what do you call it? Like, um, it presses my skin and then I get like a, like a press mark, if that's a, it's, it's a word in English. So I decided to go with 3.5 millimeter needle because it gives me quite a flexible gauge. Uh, and then for, these are 48, because I have quite a loose uh, gauge. Um, these are 48 uh, stitches. Then the big ones were 52 and the small ones were 46. But for the heel, I added an extra stitch to get an even number. Um, yeah, so basically I just started um, planning in August uh, that, um, okay, what am I gonna do? So still in August, I was a, a fair, firm believer of uh, German short row heel. So I had planned to make 10 pairs of socks, German short row heel, and the heel uh, and the heel and the toe part would be with contrasting colors. So I could buy quite a lot of the 150 gram skeins of the, the bottom color or the main color and then just make sure that I have enough accents. So 
uh, yeah, so basically that's how I went. I went to buy a lot of yarn. <laughs> I had a whole backpack full of yarn when I arrived home. I also took all the scraps that I had in Helsinki and at my dad's place and packed it up. And honestly, I have pretty much nothing left um, at this point. So I calculated just perfectly. Um, so basically, I will put some pictures here around because the, the socks have already left uh, last week. Uh, they were given to their new owners. So they are no longer with me, but I have some pictures. But I mean, I think most of us have seen a basic sock. Um, so basically, my what I really liked about, because before I started this, I, I've started with socks knitting socks but at some point I was like screw this I don't want to knit socks socks are ugh. I don't want to do this anymore so at some point I had a little bit of like a allergic reaction oh uh, a sock overdose so I didn't knit any socks except if of course somebody asked for my dad for my grandma and grandpa but I really think it was just because I hadn't nailed down that perfect recipe that basic what people call vanilla um, recipe for my own socks or how I like to make them because everybody we have different gauges we have different preferences different this and different that I've now really with 10 pairs of thick socks well nine pairs this is a fingering weight because I ran I didn't have enough yarn to make a pair as big and this was already half ready so I decided to you know just go with it um, so basically I have really on this journey uh, nailed down the sock basic sock recipe for my, myself that I like knitting that comes whips up quickly so uh, I have a three knit three pearl one ribbing uh, I also did knit one per knit two pearl one and per knit four but two by two ribbing is really for some reason my hands start to hurt so I uh, found that uh, one time one by three so uh, knit one pearl one uh, is really the best for me so I really like this uh, I practiced a lot of heels so basically um, I have to take my phone to show you so basically I'll pop the picture here as well now my, my thingy starts to squeeze Okay, my, my boyfriend is having some Excel issues, so I'll just... <laughs> but yeah, so basically I'll put a picture here on top of me, so you will not have to just watch me uh, looking in looking at a picture of my... of some socks. Crap, sorry. I could have also uh, done this beforehand, but I am really in my personal life not much of a preparer. All right, so let's see. So basically, um, starting from the, well, my left, not sure which one is for you, uh, but the one with um, basically gray sock with yellow heel. So that is a slip stitch heel, but I've crossed the slip stitch stitches. So every other round I slip another stitch. So it's cross, cross stitch heel maybe. Uh, and then just uh, a regular, what is it called? It's called wide ribbon. What is when you take? Uh, wide ribbon decrease, directly trans translated for Finland. I don't know what it's called in English. Next one is on just a regular heel without any strengthening. So what, when you slip the stitches, you strengthen the heel. So that is just without anything strengthened and then just a regular toe. The next one is just a regular slip stitch heel. The pink one is a uh, German short row heel with, uh, before I, it's just um, stockinette. And before I knit, start increasing, because first you, of course, do short rows and then you do long rows. Before I start increasing the rows again, I make a go three times back and forth to create a little bit more space. And then the next one is a slip stitch heel, but I have kept the, the ribbing. So it's basically a ribbed slip stitch heel. So, um, and the next one, the, pur the blue one with uh, purple heels are like a slip stitch heel but with the slips on the pearl side. The next one is just a German show row heel, all, um, is it a goddess stitch? 
and then of course the rows in between and the last one is just a, a slip stitch heel as in garter stitch so I've slipped something I don't even I don't know how to make these heels I've just like kind of winged it as I went but I really realized here that after making so many heels that my um, dislike towards the slip stitch heel uh, the flap heel or whatever it's called was really really just because lack of practice so I really found my sock recipe uh, and I really really now maybe I even prefer the regular it's called the Dutch heel in Finnish um, just a regular slip stitch heel with a flap turn here so it's very basic but I hadn't really done it that much because I found I found the joy of uh, German short rows really 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 early and I kind of went with it so uh, but now I could maybe I'm like 50 50 if which one I like more but a lot of basic socks with my new basic recipe of one by three ribbing regular slip stitch heel depending on how variating on how I slip and then just uh, yeah then just a wide decrease here and I leave uh, depending on the size a few stitches alive here and then I just I think it's called kitchener stitch then I just stitch them together so that's pretty much how I did my box of socks but I don't think the fact that I did a lot of socks and um, the fact that I did a lot of socks was fun. But I think the biggest thing was that it was such a nice journey to knit. I like, it's really basic. That this is basically what we teach in school to kids. And almost a lot of Finns know how to do this by heart. It's There's nothing special about it. Um, I have also a... A pair of just, I'm just gonna hide here, maybe. Yeah, just a regular pair of, of, um, yeah, fingering weight socks. One guy got fingering weight socks because he had such a big foot. And I already had one pair of fingering socks almost on my way. So, um, so I will just hide again here. So this is basically it. Uh, I still have to practice picking up the stitches here, but I'm, you know, getting better. Uh, yeah, just basic, but the thing was is not as much What I knitted is the fact that I had a really nice time on the journey of knitting these For me, it doesn't really matter what I knit as long as I am knitting so it's it's not about always creating the most fashionable or most mind-blowing lace knitted Godican from like spiderweb thin thing and uh, yarn for me knitting is It's 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 such a big part of my life that sometimes it's really nice to just knit For the joy of knitting and I'm really really happy about the box of socks that That I really enjoyed knitting it and despite feeling a little bit under the weather or being a little bit, you know, I've been a little bit uh, suffering from my depression where my brain doesn't even bend into anything too complicated at the moment but that I still can find joy of making a box of socks of vanilla basic socks with a little bit of a twist of course with the with the colorful heels and toes but Really, the main point of this thing was the nice journey about thinking about, you know, the the joy of knitting gifts. I really, really like knitting gifts and, you know, the, the general journey. I, I really appreciate all kinds of knits. I don't, I don't watch really podcasts as much of what they knit, but to see how much people enjoy knitting. So it's not as much, because I have a very much... I'm a very intu intuitive, intuitive knitter and I might just come up with an idea tomorrow, today and just cast by morning and you know, I don't really as much follow, if I see a pattern, I don't necessarily get inspired by the pattern, but when somebody really makes a really nice garment, maybe with their own color or their own twist, I'm like, hey dude, that's really nice. Um, so for me, just like um, being, uh, for example, 
I didn't feel like I had to have anything more complicated ready or anything more more. I mean, 10 pairs of socks are, it is a pretty, pretty good stretch, but I really, really enjoyed knitting these. I really had fun. I thought about the people I was knitting to. I got some warm joy. And generally, every time I, I knit a pair of socks to someone, I really knit a teeny bit of love in there, you know, on top of Napa's hair and my own hair. But I also uh, always put a little bit of love in it. So I think knitted objects are like like hugs knitted into a physical form, if you know what I mean. So I'm really, really happy with the box of socks. And despite being quite simple, I think I, I gained a lot from it because now I found my really my go-to sock recipe. I realized what kind of, because I went through a different kind of needles and I ended up with this kind of... Um, I broke a lot of needles as well. I technically basically have two pairs. I used to have a pair of Knit Pro. I don't. I I have a set of Chaya Goose, but I don't use them for for socks. They're just not my dress. What comes to knitting socks, I hate the cable, uh, and I hate knitting with metallic needles. Plus, I have, I do have a bamboo set as well, but I just no. It just that's it's a different tool for a different job. Um, so I had a pair of Knit Pros in, I think, the Birch one, Symphony. I sat on top one. Actually, I sat on top top of two one. And then I have Birch Needles from Novita. I mentioned last time, uh, I also sat on top of one of those. So I decided to go, actually, at, on this journey with sitting on, on, top, on top of a lot of needles, I decided to change the interchangeables. Uh, so I also bought my sock arsenal, so two, 400, 100, 200 centimeter cables and one pair of 3.5s, 3 and 2.5 and 2.25. So those are the sizes. Uh, I haven't gotten all the all the sizes, but I only need one pair of needles because I I knit tan like a tandem, so they're on two different cables. But then I just like knit the knit the cuff. So basically I just knit the cuff, knit the cuff on the other one, knit the heel, knit the heel on the other one, do the whatever it's called, the creases here. So I, I otherwise there will be just one ready made sock and the next one will never start. So I do them in tandem. So I basically only need one pair of needles, so, which I switch between the products. So that's great. Plus I really like the Knit Pro stoppers because every cable comes with this kind of really round big thing. That I can pop on the bottom on the end because the ones from Tag I think are quite expensive. So I haven't yeah, I just have the ones from the from the package and I I think even those I've lost. So I always put like a safety needle in the end. So that was really it for my box of socks. Uh seven seven brothers, Seskaveka yarn, iron weight, three point five needles, and a lot of working hours, a lot of love, and I'm really happy with them. So that's that is it, I think, about that. I really recommend if you don't knit socks, uh, or if you find, if you find like, um, okay, this isn't working for me. I don't really like it. My hands get tired. Even, uh, for example, I I first uh, knitted. Actually, this was the original subject that I was going to until I went on side side row, uh, on derail side rail. Honestly, my brain is like a scattered muffled and exploded egg so i'm really sorry about that um but for example i had the symphony needles which i would and then i had the novita birch needles and there was a, a world of different between those so i pretty much on 3.5 do not like the symphony ones so i bought a birch like a basics knit pro basics birch head uh, like uh, needles and I also like my needles quite short so I always buy the shortest version available I like when there's a lot of things on the cable knit pro cable is not as sticky as the Chayagu one so I really like how it runs so really try different kind of materials different kind of cables different kind of of course if you can afford it you should try different kind of different kind of needles for different kind of things which is really really what I've been doing and really I like knitting um, my finger in weight socks uh, with the symphony ones until up to like three millimeters. They're great. I really like them, but at three and a half, I don't anymore. I don't know why. 
because they're technically the same material as the as the basic spurge ones but who knows but yeah try around what kind of needles what kind of ribbing do you like what kind of heel do you like try different kind of heels different kind of ways to slip the stitches on the back or on the on the right side or the pearl side or you know try it out it's honestly what i realized here it's more about the repeat 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 and then it comes from kind of your backbone then it actually was that i didn't like the slip stitch heel as much as i wasn't just comfortable enough with it so i was like oh it's so much effort but actually it wasn't um so yeah i'm very happy with the project what it gave me and what it gave my colleagues so um yeah i have uh after this i have a couple of whips to show um actually i have two more socks on top of these i also knitted my colleague and her husband and their daughter pairs of socks because they had a loss in their family uh basic same basically same recipe uh but with their her husband's socks i made a um i made a german short row heel in garter because i um for example for my boyfriend and my dad who have very very long feet but they like really snug socks this one gives up a lot more so you can make the sock a little bit quiet with the negative ease but this one then just like gives in enough for the sock um to still sit so they like like uh, i call them compressor socks so i still use the goddess stitch heel into certain kind of socks oh sorry <sighs> like my spouse's compressor and my my dad's compressor socks so that's why i use it too still and it's it's a fine heel i like it for myself as well but I also really, really prefer my socks to be like super snug. So this heel gives in a little bit. So even it will be like a teeny tiny bit tiny when I put it on my feet. But because, you know, socks grow as you use them, uh, they'll end up perfect. So, but um, yeah, that was it for the box of socks. I have uh, two gift knits to show you and talk a little bit about my relationship with gift knitting. And after that, we'll talk a little bit about Karelian traditions. Okay, so um, basically I have had oh, three Napa's hairs everywhere, even stacked in my nose. Basically, I have had three main projects. Oop, this, this is, this, our floor is like tilted. So because I'm trying to sit so that one of my legs is on the, on the chair, I keep, I keep just like, rolling away and now this thing started creaking again it's gone okay so i have had three main projects at the past time uh, i haven't felt i have thousands of pro tons of projects uh, some of them more difficult than others but i haven't really felt like doing them i have felt like doing something simple something that gives me easy dope dopamine it is a joy and easy easily more easily feelings of success and rewarding you know that kind of stuff uh, because I've been feeling a little bit under the weather both mentally and physically um, yeah I'm I don't know why but every now and then I have a depression phase in my last two months in my last two weeks but I'm currently uh, slowly coming out of one it was very very wasn't as bad as it could have been but it was bad um, so I wasn't just feeling it for some reason and then we got sick so i just wanted to knit something really easy S and um because i work from home and our house is a freezer in the mornings i mean it's a very strange thing to me what they do here that they shut the heating or down like completely shut down overnight so when i wake up seven o'clock to get to work it's freezing in here it's honestly i'm just wearing like a top i'm wearing like a hoodie and a and a um, garden can and a, another garden can and a hat and I need to do myself some fingerless mittens and then a scarf and I'm just like a Michelin man sitting there. In Finland, we try to, I think, how I've been taught to handle an old house that always keep the heating on. Either you keep it always up or you keep it like always medium, but you just don't put it up and down, up and down, up and down. That's like an absolute no-no. So, <clears throat> um, so yeah. But for example, this room, we don't even have heating. So that's also why I'm sitting with a big sweater, which is actually very 
not me because I am not somebody who usually wears brands but this is a gift from my spouse uh, it is um, Adidas and Marimekko Marimekko um, co-op so uh, my spouse knows that I love Marimekko um, Mari, one of the Marimekko's creators uh, Kirsi, Kirsti I will write her name there just died a few last week or two weeks ago she was really a, la a girl boss or a lady boss she was really an inspiration for women in kind of like the business world and plus you see in Mary Mecca's Texas I really like their 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 their, their patterns are very Nordic and very Finnish to me they're they're not black and white all of course there's some but they really have bright colors and bright prints but then they also have very simple things like the stones givet and the the little black dots <laughs> so uh that's why i'm wearing an adidas sweater probably won't be seeing me seeing seeing me wearing anything else branded uh, i don't like like sh like um having clothing that had a big brand on them but um i'm really loving this it's a little of an oversized sweater and of course because it's my boyfriend and it has mud on it so I'm very happy with it. Um, I buy most of my clothes in from Vinted anyway, or uh, flea markets. So a lot of times when they have brand clothing there, it has 15 holes and they still ask new price because barely worn. Yeah, right. Okay, good. So I wanted to do myself something warm, but easy. So I have started a Steven Vest Vertices Unite uh, from from um, drops nord nord or nord however you want to pronounce it um there's not much to see here it's massive and it's all garter stitch just what i needed um because i've been watching a lot of uh, supernatural while i knit so um i need to follow up what is happening on the tv so i can really follow up what is happening in the in the in the knit so this has been perfect, there, especially this one. The first part is massive because, as I said, I have a loose gauge. And then on top, I chose a very slippy uh, Knit Pro Symphony needle. So it became really, really big. Really, this one could just already serve as a, as a well-sized uh, scarf to me. But um, I have two other, three other colors I am pairing it with. Sorry, my table is squeaking. So these are the three colors. They will burn out a little bit because I didn't. I was supposed to set the white balance, like the custom white balance, as the chair on my bob. So I was supposed to set the custom white balance, but I completely forgot. So these three will still be the other colors. I really am. Um, those are necessarily not my colors. These are more my colors, but they were. The nicest ones available because this isn't really about the colors or the style or like it's just that was the chair everything squeaks and aren't here i don't understand this this chair squeaks the table squeaks the floor squeaks the door squeak the window frame squeak so this is just like a squeaky house okay but yeah i just oh god it was more about i'm just gonna like loosening up the table like here honestly i might as well just pull it out and hold it myself so I, it was more about getting a usable garment to warm my um warm my neck and in my back and not putting too much money in it in case nappe poops on it or nappe you know does her thing um steals it by mistake or steals it decides to sleep inside it so it's just something that when it drops on the floor by mistake because I'm that kind of person, uh, it, it will be fine. It won't be the end of the world. So uh, this is something I am working with while I watch uh, while I watch Supernatural. I'm in season six, episode six. Um, but then oh, moving a little bit backwards. So I also have made something for my sister and my dad, and these are gift knits so i'll tell a little bit more about i'll just show you my sister's gift 
and I'll talk a little bit more about my dad's knit because I want to always cast a bit more light on one on one of the the works I'm doing. This one is in the middle of the round and I run out of yarn, but it is a, a Vera Valley Mackie uh, Pretty Little Ply. And I made myself one and my sister was like, oh my God, that's so nice. So I made her a pair or her own. This is just, uh, yeah. I think I'm using uh, the needle that the, that the thingy, uh, advices that the pattern i can i'm honestly my knitting english is excellent when i'm not stirred by uh, a camera <clears throat> i've done the slips the stitches here it is supposed to be knit one, uh, make one right and make one left but i really like doing it like this instead of the yarn between i lift the foot of the previous the next stitch and it makes it like that I really like it, but of course uh, it'll leave a hole um, if you don't do it tight enough, but it's fine. I really like it like that. Uh, then just a gutter stitch, uh, sleeves are stuck in net, and it's a really nice. I have one, I use it every day, except now, because not the poop on it. So I don't know what was what happened there, probably I just ignored her when she wanted something, and then she decided to revenge me by pooping. Yeah, a lot of my Chuck Russells. Uh, tell their opinions by shooting somewhere so that's not anything uncommon quarter stitch uh, here so uh, it's gonna be for my sister uh, it is a Christmas gift but I'm going to Finland only in the end of uh, January so um, it will be hopefully ready then I have made it from this um, it says it is a German merino yarn and it's quite fluffy so it's not superwash or anything. I know I can knit for my sister from non-superwash because she knows how to handle her garments and she won't put this into the washer and shrink it into a doll size. So I'm really, I really like this. It's really soft and really nice. I have uh, my, uh, I have made my hat from this and it's really nice. So that is something i am working on or those uh the vertices unite by steven vest i'm not sure if i actually said the designer's name but they will always be in the picture is just like a uh, casual and when i don't want to knit these two projects but my dad's project is a little bit more something i would like to talk a little bit more deeply about so um i'm gonna do that now all right so <clears throat> It's a fucking squeaky chair. Okay, yeah, let's just ignore it. Everything squeaks in this house, so don't much I can do. Um, and honestly, this is not a professional podcast, in case you haven't noticed. <laughs> so, okay, right. Um, so, I'm making... Uh, last time when I filmed, I showed that I was making my dad a shirt. Yeah, a shirt, no. A guardian, a guardian. And it was already... I think almost where I separate the sleeves, but I decided after I separated the sleeves, my boyfriend tried it on. I was like, nope, that's not going to look good on him. Um, it just wasn't going to fit. It was, yeah, it just wasn't going to flatter his build. So I ripped it off out uh, oops, and started something new. So this is uh, a pattern from a Finnish... Um, magazine or it's like a pattern it's like a pam pamphlet <laughs> with a pattern and it is called a um uh, baita which means a cable ferry guardian slash operator so the guy who guards the cable ferry so losivahti and i think there's a lot of lot of lot of traditional knits for um so to say sailor slash seaside slash the Isle, islands out of Finland, like isles out of, outside Finland. Uh, I'm not sure what it's called, uh, but uh, like when you live outside uh, the coast uh, on a little island and it's called a group of islands make a... That's the word. <clears throat> but in any case, there's a very much knitting traditions on that side. Uh, traditionally, they are often knitted from... Um, a very rustic raw yarn, uh, kind of like Icelandic style, but 
uh, more leaning into the Finnish kind of kind of territory. But my dad is itchy as hell. He itches just from watching wool, uh, regular wool, and I just it just it's just not gonna happen with him. So despite I know that some people think it is an insult to knit this, uh, what is based on a traditional Finnish garment uh it's like knitting an icelandic sweater out of well this it is um drops merino super fine super super drops super drop <laughs> honestly honestly my brain is just like <clears throat> it is drops super fine super fine <laughs> honestly i will write it down uh, I've used this yarn a lot. I made my own uh, pretty little ply out of it, so I should know what it's called. Um, but yeah, apparently I don't. Uh, but it doesn't matter. Um, yeah, so it is an insult for some that I'm knitting it with this one. My dad is a very traditional Finnish man. Uh, top Viking with blonde hair, red beard, the whole shenanigans. And he's the perfect candidate actually to wear these because that is kind of the guy you're seeing in the advertisers with these things on but it has to be merino because otherwise my dad will not be able to wear it just it's simple you should not knit anything when doing gift knits you should also consider or no wait i will re rail my thoughts when knitting gifts you should always consider things from perspective of the person who's getting them so for example i always 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 give my friends who ha who do not knit themselves or do not knit from merino always give them superwash hardcore seven brothers novita yarn socks or regia or whatever good durable sock yarn because they will put them in the washing machine and they will ruin them because i don't wash my hand dyed merino socks in the machine because they'll come out with holes um that's just it or ruin the colors so basically i always try to consider it to be as easy as possible for the person who gets the knit to to um yeah uh, or the yarn choices or color choices traditionally this garment should be gray but my dad personally thinks life is already so gray that he doesn't want to wear gray undergarment. uh, undergarments maybe gray undergarments but garments in, ge in general so this will also be his uh me under layer he will put a jacket on top of this when he goes to work so he might sweat in it and we really need to be able to wash it so i really considered all the pointers he had has to be soft okay i i really it's a nice yarn but it's the feel of it is whew. and sometimes when you you hit it with the wooden stick it just like keeps this kind of like rubbing your fingers together kind of uh, no it takes my autism all the wrong ways but i love my dad so i will knit him what he he wants because for me it's more about the this would really not be my cup of tea in any way but he wants it. He wants it like this. I'll knit it. And despite it's not necessarily the most enjoyable knitting. Um, in the sense that it's not as inspiring. As something knitted from a yarn that I really adore. The inspiration to this knit comes of course from the joy of knitting. But of course the fact that then my dad will get a really nice garment. I've knitted a lot of love in it. I don't live anywhere nearby. Because I of course live in another country. So he will have a permanent big hug from me in the form of this one so that is pretty much it so i've ripped it back chose a better model because it's useless for me to knit up a massive size um garment and then it looks funky on him so i always want to do something that makes the people look nice because a lot of for example the sleeves i really want them to rather be oversized than undersized because my dad as a tall guy has issues finding garments that have sleeves that actually don't end up here i personally usually don't like long sleeves so i don't have that issue but for example then my sister she often has the issue that because she is quite busted busty everything is rising up a lot so you have to do some short rows in the front or the back or both if you make a 
pull over. So it's really, I also want the people who wear my knits to feel pretty in them or feel like, hey, I look good in this. So I really like to avoid their usual fallbacks in what they get in buying a garment in the shop. So for me, it's really, really important when I knit a piece of my couch. Um, so when I knit that it's something that I consider the person I'm getting it. Because I could also just whip him up. Like even this one that I'm knitting, I've just already thrown it on the floor there. But even the merino I'm knitting my sister's shirt from, it's not going to work for my dad. Because it's still too rustic. And it is, uh, you can't wash it in the machine. And he will definitely throw it in the machine. Um, or then it will just smell like, well, however working gear smells like when you come home. So yeah, it's, that's pretty much it with this one. Uh, I really enjoyed knitting it because I'm really happy how it will end up. I will combine two, actually two, um, two patterns. Patterns is the word of today that is forgotten. Um, two patterns. So when I get uh, all the way up, which is a long way ahead, it's as at least has to be at least twice as long as this. Uh, so like double this still. But um, yeah, so basically there will be a lot of knitting. I will combine on the upper part two, um, two patterns, but it'll be nice. Uh, a traditional knit and not in such a traditional way. But that is a good uh, bridge to uh, a more traditional things. But um, yeah, about knitting gifts. Um, I love knitting gifts. I understand that not everybody wants to knit gifts. Some people want have very little knitting time and they want to just do their own projects uh, for themselves. Some people, yeah, just don't don't like knitting gifts. Don't want to knitting gifts. I love knitting gifts. I knit to everybody who who wants to have a knit. And generally, November, December, I knit gifts. Often even over to January. So. Um, but I only need to people who I really think are knit worthy. Really, that's really it. If you don't like knits, just tell me and you will never receive one again. Uh, but really, I've noticed that a pair of socks can bring so much joy to a person. They can be such... Uh, when I receive a pair of socks, I'm like, oh my god, thank you. They're, they're so... I don't know, there's something about received handcrafted items in general. So I like giving... Uh, handcrafted knits we are not the wealthiest people in the world so that way I can also give a gift to more people and I don't really like giving like cheap crap from the dollar store to just to give a gift so I rather just whip up a pair of socks and that's it so I really want the people to be knit worthy so if I don't like you I will not knit to you uh, so but if I haven't knit to you it doesn't mean I don't like you but um and I always consider the materials uh, for socks, they have to be superwash because people have to be able to put them in the washer. Of course, if I knit to a friend who is a knitter and, you know, knows their yarn, I can give them hand, hand dyed yarn socks. But yeah, it's generally... I was just checking if I forgot something. But yeah, generally, I love knitting gifts. I try to always consider the person, ask a little bit, what would you like to have knitted? What kind of materials, color that? That kind of jazz, but I really, really love giving knits, especially now when I live abroad. And um, I also spoke about the aspect that because I'm autistic, I'm quite stone-faced and I don't like giving people, touching people and being touched by people. So it is like an external hug that I can give people and the kind of warmth that I can't always muster up as a person. because I can seem a little bit cold. I can seem a little bit like stuck up but when I knit I can really knit all that warmth and love into a physical form so that's really my thoughts on gift knitting and um, I've been doing a lot of it and I still will be doing a lot of it so yeah buckle up 12 minutes go surprisingly quick although I'm uh, despite being quite a go one pee person I can talk I can really talk. I can sit here talking about things I like for like until the battery runs out, until the video, until the memory card runs out. I can just sit here talking about things I like. But that is generally typical to people of my people with Asperger's. <clears throat> yeah, let's see what we had here. So gift knits. Yeah, 
gift nets, yeah. Gonna do a lot of them. Uh, this is gonna be, and gift nets are often quite simple. So you will not probably see on this podcast anything complicated. I have uh, a couple of things uh, that I want to do, a couple of patterns from Anna Johanna, a couple of, uh, I have a lace guardian in the workings, I have all kinds of things in the works, but this and next month disturbs me that the pumpkin is upside down, or on its side, no it's upside down, it's better, no, I want it to be up, oh it went belly up, like a turtle. It's like me with my spinal rama. Sometimes I sit on the floor and I can't get up. And then I'm like a turtle. They're like, help. Um, so yeah, you will see a lot of knits here in quantity. But not necessarily anything complicated. Because often I knit quite simple things for the people I love. Just simple hats, mittens, socks. But yeah, I as I said, it's more about... My channel is more about the love towards knitting and the joy towards knitting, learning new things. Um, I just love. I just love knitting. That's just all. I just and I want to talk to you about it. So it's there's not necessarily anything mind blowing in my projects. They're not super complicated. I don't do my own designs and 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 such. But I really just love knitting, and that is really what I love about other people making YouTube. When you really can see that they love what they do. Um, so, um, okay, so, um, I just cooked up there. I had, um, mistaken it because my microphone is in my pocket here. I had mistakenly shut it off. So I kept talking for 10 minutes without nobody hearing except my neighbor and my spouse. Um, but okay, let's start again. So I wanted to talk to you about traditions. So a little bit of history. Um, I am a Karelian by blood. Uh, my mom's side and my dad's side have. So um, my family has mostly migrated to Helsinki because of jobs and to Pirkama because they lost their home when my grandpa was little, who's 92 now, so it's a long time ago. But uh, when Karelia had to leave Karelia, which is now Russian, Russia, uh, or there's Finnish Karelia, North and South Karelia, or Karelia and, and South Karelia. But in any case, there's Finnish Karelia. And then there's the one that is still in Russia. And the Russian side used to be Finland. <clears throat> and then my family just do, 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 come over. And they were given homes elsewhere. So um, they settled in different places. Uh, my mom's family decided to still stay around the border. Eventually then migrating to Helsinki. Simply because of jobs. Um, so yeah. That is my cultural heritage. Of course, blood heritage, but for me, you know, you can be a lot of things by blood, but you can also adapt and what you, what, how you're raised and what you see and where you live is more important to me than what I am practically by, by blood. So, um, so yeah, I have, especially in the past 10 years, when I've lived abroad, been really interested about learning more about the Karelian traditions that I also have. You know, my grandma is a very, very Karelian person. And she's really been the influence of Karelia in my life. Uh, she has the good and the bad. <laughs> and I, um, but yeah, there's a lot of food culture. There's a lot of uh, tradition. There's a lot of symbolism. And yeah, so one of the symbolism, um, one of the very important and symbolism things about uh, the Kareli is um, the cloth. So the cast bike is so many things um, and, and a lot of people maybe interpret it, interpret it differently. So if what I'm telling doesn't really fit your experience about being Kareli, I think a lot of families and a lot of areas, depending on your religion, it is a lot of different. But this is what I have gotten down from my grandmother in my own research and and such so basically Kareli uh, ceremonial and the what it's it said it's a ceremonial cloth but you use it everywhere so basically kaspaika is what we're going to talk about and it combines two things i love culture and handcraft so it is this thing here which i have made it myself but let me talk about first what in the world is this so it is clearly embroidered, a cloth that has been embroidered. And kaspaika 
it's exactly that. Uh, it is called kas, and paikka is a place. So a towel, a hand towel, a hand place, literally translated. And it is in so many forms, you can see it. You can see these ones put over the white, long, long ones, put over an icon in your in your house, but it can also be a a towel and when you come in you wash your hands and and dry your hands that can also be a kaspaika it's a lot less decorational uh, sometimes when you have guests over you can put it a more decorational one in or you have one a decorational one for guests um, kaspaika can be something that some of these are really really old things that you don't use anymore but for example in my house we have a kaspaika near where you wash the hands uh, my mom doesn't i'm sorry mom God bless your soul. She hates when we work, when we when we dry our hands there, but it's just perfect. Um, so she kept it more decorational. But I mean, we used to dry our hands there, and she was not happy with it because there was another cast bike behind that one, so another towel behind that one. But um, so it's been in my life. I've seen them, but um, it has been something really a part of being a Karelli that has really interested me, but also because. Uh, the handcraft part. So you craft it yourself. Of course, there's industrial ones, but but for example, when you got married, you used to make them to the whole family of the husband or your fiance, and it was really a showcase of how good you are in handcrafts. Uh, Corelli, all my handcraft stuff comes from my Corelli side. We are we do everything. They, it's it's a pride to know how to do things. And I really, yeah, knitting comes from there. Of course, back in the day when my when my grandma was a kid, they didn't knit because they wanted to knit out of fun, but because, you know, you had to knit. Otherwise, there wasn't any wool socks in the shops and it was after war and, you know. But this kaspaika, uh, the towel, is really something I really want to have like incorporating into my own life um, because it is as I said so many forms it can be ceremonial like these ones that I will talk about in a second uh, but it can be such a simple thing as a towel next to where you wash your hands uh, when you come in um, you know back in the day these are really really old traditions some when you got a baby they used to bring you uh, a package of food wrapped in a kaspaika when somebody got christianed or baptized i'm not sure what it is exactly in english they used to give the uh, priest a kaspaika to wash their hands uh, when you got engaged they used to give you a kaspaika when you and especially important it was um with funerals and this has something to do with death or passing of my relative so if you that's a that's an uncomfortable subject to you i'm i'm sorry but um i it, it is in a sense a very nice one and warm and memories and and such like that so it's nothing like i'm not going to be all depressed here but it was really kaspaika really it was everywhere uh when yeah, it, it could be used everywhere. It was a ceremonial cloth. A newer, uh, a newer tradition is when somebody moves into a, into a new house, you bring them a kaspaika there to like wish the new house that is fresh and pure and that kind of stuff. So it's really a cloth that travels in all situations of life. Uh, there's different ones, there's ceremonial ones, there's some more toned down ones, that there could be one that is just a linen, uh, it's traditionally a linen cloth, um, embroidered with linen yarn. I've not used linen yarn, and I think this is polyester, because uh, budget, but my dream is that I could at some point be good enough to make a whole linen cloth for myself with the ceremonial and they are always uh, embroidered. The Russian ones are a lot more detailed. The Finnish ones are a little bit more simple. So you might have also, if you're Russian or have Russian heritage or Baltic heritage, you might have seen these motifs somewhere. I'm trying to get them close. But yeah, it's it's the history of this is very wide. You should read about it in uh, if you want. I'm just gonna see if I covered everything because there's so much and my memory isn't the best. But yeah, it's it is, and especially what these are used for is um, 
yeah, it's because my mom and my uh, my spouse's grandma passed, and my mom not so recently, my my spouse's grandma recently, and in the funeral I had with me uh, this uh, for them, I specifically decided to to make these cast bikes. So uh, it is just Ida band. I will just first tell what it's made of. So Ida band, and it uses this stitch that I don't have a name for. Maybe somebody reading or looking at this. It's called this Karelian front stitch. Exactly, like directly translated. And it should look same both both ways. These two look quite the same both ways, but just say that the, my mom's doesn't. So, and these have a certain motifs that I have chosen. This one has the same one as the other one. And traditionally these are always made with red red yarn a linen yarn i guess uh, i've used uh, i think it's a dmc or something a mullen mullen yarn two two strands uh, but my mom hated red so i made hers in a different color um, but yeah these are these come in different sizes uh, the bigger ones of course and the longer ones go on top of an icon but they can be anything from i think this wide to this long are the the ones and they you can see them everywhere uh, celebrational but you could see it i don't think i'm not sure how many Karelis nowadays keep a cast bike at home we have one but a very we haven't really incorporated it that much into our lives which i prefer to do nowadays because you know bringing culture into my life uh, and i live in a mix a lot of culture because Lemberg's culture and Dutch culture and my culture and his culture so it's like a mess so we've kind of wanted to incorporate a little bit of everything but yeah this is just and there's like you can see those little cross it's really bright because my my thingy isn't very doesn't have a lot of uh, light power it has the a, a quite a low f number so basically it's just this and then depending on the pattern they're designed for five uh, 10, 5, 7, I think 12 and almost 20 centimeters of width. And I have used a book to do this, which is not here, but it's called uh, Embroing Your Kaspaika, which is made by the Youth Orthodox of Finland. So that's Dave. I, I took it from there and I learned it from there. So um, I would then maybe talk a little bit about what what these particular Kaspaikas are. And what they're used for, and uh, yeah, so it's just embroidered stitch that looks the same front and back, and on a I think this is should be linen, but it's a polyamide or something like that, Ida band with five centimeters. And now I'm gonna tell what they are. Honestly, this is gonna be a kilometer long episode again, but that's just how I am. I yeah, you will probably uh, forty minutes is kind of average for me. Thirty minutes you will not very often see but yeah so let me just see i have made some serious notes here oh and when you got married you used to also bribe the sauna and house leprechaun uh, i think that's the word I, I try to google what is the house leprechaun apparently is the word a sauna leprechaun and house leprechaun with making these so they would be nice to you and the sauna leprechaun is something that with the belief lives in every sauna of a happy house in Vela. So, yes, uh, these two are made. This one is made for my mom, uh, for my boyfriend's mom, and it has a. Um, so basically, these two cloths are only used on celebrations, so birthdays, um, All Saints Day, the memory Memorance Day of their death, and uh, they are. Because of their de because of death, and I made this to the funeral. It was with me in the funeral, and the old belief is that um, when somebody in the house died, the the bride of the house or the the young uh, the young lady of the house that would be, I guess me, at this at this house um, put out their most beautiful cast back on the window to help mm, the person the soul move on and these are believed to be a linen way a yeah a way linen way or linen cloth a linen road 
between <clears throat> us and the other side. Um, and it used to keep these on the window to help the person's soul move on and pass on. In Karela tradition, in the belief, of course, there's, as I said, different beliefs, different different tell down when, when people have, you know, different things that people have been telling their kids. Um, and most of this comes from my, my grandma and the history I've read and decided to adapt into my own life. Um, but the belief is that the soul of the person will stay around for, I think, 16 days or then 14 or 13 around that ballpark. And after that, you have a celebrational dinner to bid them person far away. And then you place this on the window again and the person will. And also to that ceremonial, that kind of memorance dinner, which we also kept to my grandma or to our grandma, everybody will bring their best cloth. Of course, I'm the only Corelli, so I just bring my, brought my best. But this is the one that I used for her and this is for made for her specifically. So I've made specific clothes for specific people. Uh, I've chosen pictures that really... I feel like uh, in all of them I have incorporated the tree of life, which means uh, it is a tree of life. It's a yeah, it, it's it's in a lot of cultures, but here it uh, it represents represents basically life and all stages of life, uh, raising of the soul up into the afterlife or heaven. If you if if that's the if that is um in your belief and it really represents it is a thing that exists in two places the roots are underground the top is up in the air and it has the it represents the whole way of life so there's a lot of anticipation of what this means in a lot of different even different books about from Karelia tell different things so that's really what it represents to me uh, then there's a um, I think it's called a wood grouse but in the book, it was a male version, but I wanted to do a female version, a more feminine version, maybe, to this one. Um, in Finnish, the wood grou grouse uh, is called, the male is called ukkomet, so it's mainly like, it's kind of majestic, kind of, kind of like a leading masculine figure, you know? But our grandma, my boyfriend's grandma, was really the leading female figure in our life, so I really wanted to make a wood grouse there's several different birds you can choose from birds um present basically they're a symbol of love warmth um good uh, harvest light good things a bringer of good news and she was really that kind of figure in our life so these are the two ones i incorporated he here um for my mom i have also added a flower they are also very popular I have actually no idea what this flower represents, but my mom, it looks like my mom, so I chose this. And then there's a tree of life, because, yeah, because I try to always cooperate, because I think it's really nice on the other end, and then in the other end. And these, this is not red, because my mom hated it, so, would have been an insult. <clears throat> so, these things I, yeah, bring out on celebration days during Christmas, this will also be... In on top of their pictures, we'll bring them pictures down. I put them on these, and kind of, I said it's a pathway between them and us, or this life world and the other world, and it kind of brings us all together, invites them in, and kind of very spiritual thing, I guess. But it's really a really really nice way. The whole cast back, of course, these represent what they represent. But I am also planning to do more day-to-day -day cast bypass uh, clothes to us. So these are very... I really started from the festive end and really like the heavy subjects. But it's... Cast bypass are a very, very important part about funerals. Everybody brings their best cast bypass, uh, best cloth. The Yeah, the lady... the the new because of course back in the day you used to live with your mother-in-law so when they died you became the young young lady of the house i don't know what is amanda called in finnish but it's in english but it's like the the lady of the house so they put out put it out and it was really 
yeah so it's it's been really it's really comfortable comforting to make this because while i make them i think about the person i really also as i knit warm memories and I, I knit warm thoughts about in mine in the in traditional karali manner it's not that pretty on the other side so i would not necessarily be able to marry on a good house because uh, i really suck at this but uh practice makes you perfect right so i'm planning to make one uh to my dad's house when his new kitchen is ready to like just a everyday kaspaika cloth and then make some into my house so i will be embroidering a lot more these were easy to start with if you're more interested about what a kaspaika is you can google it i will leave the how you write it and the wikipedia link but i really wanted to show this because these are really really pretty and dear to me and then i can also tell you a little bit about where i come from and oh God, what kind of cultures are in my life so these are really they will go away now and be taken out in christmas when we have our christmas dinner and really you know they they give me comfort and happiness in a weird way so uh but i yeah i really wanted to introduce the kaspaika um i will be crafting those cloths as i said a little bit less depressing versions of them so everyday cloths you know to our kitchen on and such and maybe to give us a gift to my relatives but that is really something i am also going to try to puzzle with in the future it's some, really something you need your own mind time and mindset too because it's so different and requires constant attention but i found it quite relaxing and because there's a lot of patterns out there but i always want to know what they mean mm. so yeah it's it's something it's, it's a little bit i hesitate a little bit to bring this to this podcast because i'm not sure how people will react to it but then again it's something i'm really interested and really dear to me my the cultural heritage especially now when abroad and bringing customs from my yeah my family into into things so it's really i think we are a bit of a generation who finds that not all new is shiny and glory anymore after the whole everything was new and shiny and fuck old so i think yeah for me moving abroad has brought a lot of appreciation to the things i've learned to do a lot of foods that i wasn't ever be able to make myself because you could just buy them from the shop and yeah it really has learned me to appreciate things and heritage and culture and really in a different way so uh but oh yeah yeah hopefully this doesn't cause too much of an exit from my channel's viewers but uh yeah you can always hop over this because i will leave like time steps and stuff so so yeah but that was pretty much it from the handcraft content um that was handcrafts it was uh, embroidery um but yeah um i have i'm gonna say a couple of words about how i've been where i've been what i've been doing and then wrap this up because it's gonna be a long one okay so yes if you made it all the way here thank you <laughs> congratulations um yeah i've been gone about one and a half months um partly because of depression that sometimes hits me because yeah apparently my chemistry in my brain has temporary Im- uh, it's always imbalanced but it, sometimes it's more imbalanced than generally so there's really no reason for it it's sh- it just comes and goes then we got sick my boyfriend brought something from school it lingered here for three weeks almost four and then of course it hit everybody's kids well my, my boyfriend is my kid but people who don't work from home like we do brought st- stuff home and everybody was sick at work there was a lot of work so it's been been really busy and being really heavy and i haven't really been the usual cheerful anna i usually am um but i've been watching a lot of i've been reading a lot of books i've been reading the ruth galloway series i still find a little bit the whole thing how much they really have to talk about her weight and how she's oh my god i'm so fat and that like like thinking that the first thing anyone looks at you thinks about your weight i mean Maybe that's some, what some people do, but when I look at a person, it's not the first thing I like. Or I don't sit here thinking about how how thick my neighbor is. Um, so that's a little bit of a minus on those series. But it's it's good, kind of like, a little bit predictable, quite 
light despite the by the murder mysteries but you know something good to listen behind when i work uh, on top of that i'm starting the dune as something i will listen to outside work because sometimes i'll just zone out completely and don't hear for anything what's happening in 10 minutes so it's really something that i want to listen to outside work i watched the movie but i felt it's a really nice movie, but I felt that I was just told like 10% of the whole thing and it was just a scratch of surface. So I really want to want to read the book. Um, so, yeah, and then I watched Supernatural, uh, my all time favorite now, all time favorite. I've just started. So I don't know why I said that, but my current all time favorite uh, because it's so basically as well light. Um, tough subjects at times and like all kinds of weird freaky things but I really like it um, and then I've been playing Dungeons and Dragons with uh, I found this really nice RP group that I'm doing it with uh, and then I've been playing recently Diablo 3 and I'm thinking about going back to World of Warcraft but I'm not sure if that's a good idea for for all my knitting time so <clears throat> so yeah but basically I've been just existing and floating in space and time. So just trying to uh, keep on keeping on. But I'm always really honest about how I'm feeling. So if I'm not feeling well, you'll know it. I'm not going to just be here. <laughs> and I don't mind people who can fake it until they make it. Um, some people are like that. I'm not. And I understand that a lot of people watch this podcast to kind of cheer up. Uh, but I'm never that kind of depressed person that I'll just like shit on everybody else's mood but i just want to be honest of how i am doing so that's pretty much it going towards christmas a lot of christmas knits i'm off 23rd and 24th and then there's a weekend so i will have a nice finished christmas on christmas day christmas yeah so i'm also thinking about making a christmas vlogmas uh combining finnish and english maybe once or twice a week i will well twice a week I will put out an English and Finnish episode <clears throat> of like 10 minutes or so. So nothing nothing major. So thinking about that one. So then maybe there will not be any any episode in a regular episode in, in December before the end of it. So we'll see. But that's the plans and things and stuff that is going on. I'm, you know, I will take my hand off that thing. And yeah, thank you for watching. Um thank you come again <laughs> see you later bye and if you uh want to find me elsewhere i will you will probably be able to keep up with what i'm keeping up with uh best in instagram sisu under dash knits but i will of course put a thingy up here so you'll be able to follow me there but yeah thanks a lot i will uh go upload this whole monster of 20 gigs of stuff into um into my um laptop and i have my boyfriend with that excel so and it's really really cold in here so i'm starting not to feel my feet anymore so i'm just gonna take off so thank you and bye